Thank you for joining us for English session program on radio television of Burkina Faso from Ouagadougou. A delegation of AFRICOM, the U.S. Command for Africa, met President of Faso this week in Ouagadougou. The delegation head says the visit is to get more informed on the security situation of Burkina Faso, but also to tie a solid partnership with the country, mainly on the military cooperation. AFRICOM is committed to helping the Gifa Sahel countries facing terrorism in the region. Trade unions, uh, civil society, and some citizens demonstrated across the country on the 29th of November to protest against the recent fuel costs raised by the government. In Ouagadougou, demonstrators met at the Trade Union Center before demonstrating in downtown to give workers claim to a member of the government. More details with Omar Zomri. Ouagadougou, November the 29th. The streets of the capital city are overcrowded by demonstrators. They are demonstrating against the raise of taxes on fuel, 75 CFA franc. That is the source of the feud between the government and the demonstrators. 75 CFA franc were added in each liter of fuel, gasoline and diesel fuel. Started at the labor house, the crowd walk through the main street of Ouagadougou from the labor house through the United Nations roundabout by chanting slogans to the Ministry of Commerce. There, demonstrators meet the Minister of Commerce and Industry to tell him face to face their discontentment with this government measure. Je peux vous garantir que je m'emploierai en tout cas avec les autres membres du gouvernement à ce que nous trouvions une solution idéale. I can assure you that I will talk to my colleagues in order to find appropriate solution because it is a common fight. All we are fighting to improve workers living in working conditions, and it is up to us, member of the government, to address appropriate responses to those questions," said the Minister of Commerce, Aruna Kabore. Then after, the minister saw his guest off. The guest continued the procession to the Catholic Church. Our first exigence, the exigence principal today, we are requiring the government to bring back the former fuel price. This demonstration is carried all over the country, said Chrysostom Zugmore, president of CCVC, the coalition against the expensive life, one of the major civil organizations in Burkina Faso. After one hour and a half of work, demonstrators joined their starting point while supported by the political opposition organization, CEFOP, none of the major leaders of the opposition was seen with the demonstrators. The government and private sector actors met in Bobo Diulaso this week for the traditional talks. The meeting was presided over by Prime Minister Paul Kabatiba. One of the most important decisions taken during the meeting is the labeling of some local products like she butter, leather produced in Kaya region, and local clothes called Faso Danfani. For more details, I invite you to listen to Mahamad Isawadogo. He is the president of the Chamber of Commerce of Burkina Faso. We waiting uh, many things from uh, the government uh, to find a solution of our preoccupation. Uh, you know, this new form uh, made from the region, different region. And this region have uh, two major points uh, that we didn't have a solution in the region. So we took all this point to Bobo. So now we discuss with uh, the government to see how to find solution for this, those points that we didn't find a solution in the region. We expect that this time, uh, this new form we permit every uh, team, I mean uh, government and sec uh, private sector, to discuss uh, well and find a final solution. The U.S. ambassador to Burkina Faso signed a compact with eight associations of the country. The compact allows those associations having grant of 28 million CFA francs from the U.S. embassy. The U.S. ambassador says it is the contribution of his country for the development of local communities. So we're very, very happy to bring back the Ambassador's Self-Help Program that has mobilized 25 million French CFA francs for projects that were de designed 
and implemented by the people at the grassroots level of Burkina Faso. Small scale peop, uh, uh, farmers, people who are working in gardens, people who are digging wells, people who are making um, uh, soap manufacturing. And this is a chance to give those people a little boost up as they create a better future for themselves. So this is something that's so exciting for us here in the United States and at this embassy to help and walk together with the people of Burkina Faso as they create a better future for themselves. We, this program was suspended, it was delayed for about a year as the United States government was getting, a uh, new government was getting installed and establishing their priorities and managing our budget process. But we're so pleased that that period of uh, delay is passed We've got this program, we're moving forward, and we're looking forward to the next steps to walk hand in hand with the people of Burkina Faso. So how do you measure the, the impact of this project? So we have a very exciting program here where staff from the U.S. Embassy in Burkina Faso all choose to be sponsors of the different self-help projects that we've sponsored in the past in this current year. And that sponsorship is a chance for someone who might work in a different uh, function, like working in the library or working in supporting uh, the uh, procurement, to go out to visit Burkinabe villagers in their village and see the impact of this, these small-scale loans, these small-scale uh, contributions to um, self-development uh, on the part of people in rural areas. So it's a great opportunity f to, to reinforce already strong ties between the people of Burkina Faso, who are our wonderful and generous hosts, and the people of the United States who have come from afar to learn about what we can do together. So it's an exciting program. It's a unique uh, sponsorship between our embassy staff and the uh, recipients of this program to help us understand how the projects are being implemented, what challenges they might be uh, facing, and how we can move forward to accomplish the objectives of these resources. Can we tell people to be ready for the next program? Yeah, pl uh, please look at our Facebook page, and that's where we announce so many programs and how we advance so much of the, of the bilateral cooperation between Burkina Faso and the United States. I, I encourage people to join our library, to stay in touch with us, and through those mechanisms, we can look at new s stages of cooperation between the, the Pays des Amintegra, the people of country of people of integrity, and the United States of America. President of Faso gave a kickoff of the first edition of the cattle breeding show of Burkina Faso this week. The show aims at working for the development of the sector that employs the majority of the Burkina Bay. Only 1% of the budget is granted every year to the cattle breeding sector by the government. And President of Faso recognized with actors that it is not enough. Rokma Christian Kabore uh, took the commitment to work for a better development of that sector. And one of the decisions he took is the budget raised for the cattle breeding sector. The capital city of Burkina Faso hold the fifth edition of the CITA, the African International Textile Show. During the show, about 10 countries exhibited their know-how in the domain of textile. The show aims at promoting and magnifying the diversity of the African textile in Burkina Faso, the Faso Dan Fani, the local clubs is more and more used in official ceremonies and one of the goals of the CITA show is to encourage people consuming that local product for the development of uh, local economies. France is getting ready to return to the African continent its cultural properties. Burkina Faso is concerned with more than 1,000 cultural objects to be returned. Authorities of the Minister of Culture met journalists in Wagad to go to deal with this issue. The Secretary General of the Ministry of Culture says that measures have been taken to welcome those cultural objects. The French ambassador to Burkina Faso, Xavier Lapers, specifies that only objects which entered illegally in France are concerned in the repatriation process. Francis de Klerk is a Belgian who traveled across the African continent from Abidjan to Kenya and Ouagadougou. He went into contact of the African culture and the African civilization. He wrote a book in which he made a summary of his stay in all those African countries. We met him to get more details on this book, I invite you to listen to uh, Francis Declerc. 
In this book, it's uh, a, 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 a quantity uh, of books, of uh, letters that I sent to some friends, essentially in Europe, from uh, different places where I have been in Africa. So you will see that uh, uh, the, the, the capitals like Kinshasa, uh, also, uh, of course, Ouagadougou, but Dakar, Abidjan, Lomé, Togo, of uh, small places like Mombasa, well, it's not really small, or even Tusiana here in Burkina Faso, from where I wrote this letter and I sent it to my correspondents. How do you see the African continent? Do you see it as a continent of hope or a continent of despair? <laughs> no, certainly not despair. Uh, in the contrary, when I'm already but more than 30 years in, in Africa when I, I traveled and I'm already uh, today since, since the year 2000 I'm living in Burkina Faso so I have a, a good experience of this, uh, this, this continent and of some uh, countries. Uh, when you see the fantastic evolution of these countries since uh, the years 1980 till today it's incredible. Uh, nowhere you will find such an evolution. So, no, despair, absolutely not. In the contrary, I think that uh, uh, the future of the continent, in fact, we have to say the continent of the future. Thank you for watching Stay Connected to Radio Television of Burkina Faso to enjoy your weekend. See you next time and take care.